Hayes, author of the book Sociology, published on October 10, 2011. All languages fuse symbols with distinctive emotions so that, as, as multilingual people know, a single idea may feel different when spoken in Spanish rather than English or Chinese. The superior warp hypothesis is a thesis that many of you should know about because it involves language and thought, which is, is used in our everyday lives. We communicate with people every day, but don't realize that language is what en enhances our understanding of our reality and our world in general. Many of us use language to communicate every day, whether it's at home, school, or work. I was curious on what communication really consists of, so I wanted to learn more about this topic, specifically about the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis. By learning about the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis, you will have a better understanding of language itself and how it applies to our everyday lives. First, I will share with you the background information on the thesis of the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis. Then, I will discuss how it is being implicated in our world today. Let's start by learning about the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis and its explanation. In the 1930s, Edward Sapir and Benjamin Whorf who had a teacher and student relationship, together introduced their hypothesis about the immense power of language. It began with Sapir's own, that own hypothesis that, the world, that, that humans perceive the world based on language. La later, Sapir's student, Worf, extended the hypothesis with his own assumption that humans, in fact, do look at the world based on language and their thoughts. They often refer to this theory as linguistic relativity or linguistic determinism. According to Madani, Kayadian, and Mohammadi, authors of the Language in the Indian Journal, in an article posted on October 2013, the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis stated that the way we think and view the world is determined by our language. Basically, our language makes us, helps us think, act, and understand the world to help us comprehend. So what is the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis exactly? In general terms, it means that people see the world differently depending on their language. There are many cultures around the world, so that means that they have their own language. The point is that as every culture has their own language, they also have different views and beliefs. This changes the way they think, act, and understand the world. For example, the Spanish language will have certain words that are something completely different in the English world. In the English language. A more specific example is how the word poison in English means gift in German. So you know poison is something negative to us. And to them also, but they use the word gift, which in our in our language it means you know something positive, something good, because it's a present. Therefore, there will be different meanings and thoughts coming from various dis distinct languages. Now that I have discussed what the superior warp hypothesis is and its explanation, let us now explore the implication of this theory to our world today. In the newspaper article posted on April 14, 2014, from the National Post newspaper, written by Joseph Heath. He states, there are many different languages in the world, which means that there will be many different flavors of thought. By this, he means as every language has its own words and meaning, they each create many different thoughts as well. Throughout the article, he talks about how language has become essential in order to communicate. There is also cognitive development mostly seen in children when they begin with their basics in school and then develop their comprehension throughout their education. He also mentions that when children speak, they talk as if they are thinking in their minds. They observe the world based on their language and thoughts. The superior war hypothesis relates to this current event because as mentioned before, this hypothesis says that people view the world based on their language and thoughts. In this current event, Heath discusses how people, especially children, develop their language and thoughts, which helps view the world or reality with different perspectives. Each person has a different culture or language, so that creates diversity and results in having different, distinct thoughts. So the more languages you speak, then you will perceive the world differently than people that only speak one or two languages. So there are many theorists still doing research and experimenting because they think that this hypothesis is not true. So they are using a lot of um, sites, and some of those sites are race and education. They use uh, race because it is since languages are really diverse, they want to use many different races to see um, to analyze them and see if it actually is true. In education, because the cognitive development is fastest in children, so they will that will help them figure out if it, the hypothesis is true or not. Now that we know what the superior worth hypothesis is and how it applies to our everyday lives, let's wrap things up. It is important to discuss this hypothesis in order to better understand our way of communicating 
and how we implicate this into our lives. First, I gave you background information on the hypothesis, and then I discussed how it is implicated to our lives today. As we will continue to use language to communicate in our daily lives, we should consider learning many other languages to help test if, the, if this hypothesis is true.